Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 27th of May, 2023. And the episode title is Tomb Raider, D&D Prices and UK Games Expo. Zoti Quest Games is in the spotlight this month, as voted for by patrons. And last week I made the quirky decision to announce that I'd given up on Zoti Quest Games ever responding to my outreach. I shared my gut feeling that I would have to push on with the indie RPG feature giving them some spotlight and some publicity, all without them. Well, what do I know? It's never over while there's still food on the table. And Roberto Biscelli, founder and sole author at the Italian publisher, got back in touch. So, we've discussed solo RPGs, Italy's tabletop gaming scene, and creepy pasta. You can find that feature on Geek Native, and links to that are in the show notes of this podcast. Last week, I also invited people to howl at me, no, don't do that, at the idea that I write up potentially controversial thoughts about Steamforged Games and Kickstarter's new partnership. No one did, so I did. That means I've written down that conflict between Kickstarter being a neutral and platform of equals for all publishers and now having some skin in the game with Steamforged. As it turns out, it hasn't proven to be controversial at all. Well, there's my gut instincts turning it to be rubbish again. However, I imagine Steamforged Games might be at UK Games Expo next weekend. I'll be there too. So... If I get bopped on the nose, then I guess they did mind. Speaking of the UK Games Expo, a huge tabletop games convention down in England, it means no Geek Native podcast next week. I'm unsure how I'll even do the routinely itemised RPG news summary or the start of the month vote for Geek Native patrons. I better figure it out. But I do know I will be a smartphone horror while I'm there. And that means taking lots of photographs and videos while trying not to spam social media and Geek Natives Discord with them. I predict lots of montage videos and collage photographs. Mind you, there's been no shortage of news in the meantime though. Kobold launched their Wizards of the Coast free 5e based Tales of the Valiant. And this is the tabletop game that's come from Project Black Flag. It's on Kickstarter, and it soared through the half a million dollars mark in funding with absolute ease. There are tiers for limited and collector's options, which is commercially wise by Cobalt, and a chance for true fans to show their fandom. But it is also expensive. That said, there's a free-to-download Tales of the Valiant preview, now in drive through RPG, and that's not expensive at all. And it's an excellent chance to sample before offering Cobalt your cash. Also free on DriveThruRPG right now is the Candela Obscura Quick Start from Darrington Press. Now, Darrington Press is the tabletop games company set up by Critical Role. And like Tales of the Valiant, the origins of Candela Obscura started with Wizards of the Coast trying to mess with the OGL and injecting commercial uncertainty into businesses based around 5e. In Candelara Obscura, players are occult investigators who must confront horrors from beyond. Hmm, interesting. So Critical Role's first RPG battle is not with Wizards of the Coast over high fantasy and it will be with Chaosium in horror. I mean, I think Candelara Obscura feels closer to Call of Cthulhu than D&D. The rule engine used is the Illuminated World system, and the complete RPG is due out later this year. There is the sense, I think, that the tabletop business model is changing, but, mind you, so is the world. Embracer, for example, had a tough week when a secret $2 billion deal fell through, and this is despite the good news of them getting control of Tomb Raider back. $2 billion, I concede, is a lot of money to be disappointed on, but at least they've got dozens of computer game studios to keep the cash flow trickling in. How much do you expect to pay for a computer game these days? 
A triple A game could easily be 70 bucks, right? What about D&D? Currently, D&D hardbacks are around 50 bucks. But as Game Rant reports, Wizards of the Coast have announced that the next wave will cost 60 bucks. And that's 20% more. However, that's only the pre-order price. And once that window closes, D&D hardbacks will cost 70 bucks. That's a 40% jump. Yep, the new D&D, once known as 1D&D, not yet known as D&D 6E or D&D 5.5E, except where it is, will in fact be D&D 70 bucks E. I wonder how much the virtual tabletop edition of the new rules will cost. But let's come back to Embracer, and not just because they're a games giant to rival Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast owners. Now, Embracer does have tabletop RPG games in their stable of publishers, including the Star Wars RPG, all through Edge Studios. Now, Crystal Dynamics, the Embracer company that got back control of games like Tomb Raider from Square Enix, also have a tabletop RPG. There's a free-to-download, official, but not canon, Lara Croft's Tomb Raider's tabletop RPG. In the zip file of core rules, you'll find a campaign, handouts, and even streamer assets, because that's the sort of attention to detail game makers need to remember these days. Let's take a look at bundles and other outro news before the twin drama of train strikes and my train trip to UK Games Expo begins. At the bundle of holding, Green Odin are back with another deal, and this time it's a flash sale for Freeport with Pathfinder rules. You'll have to be quick on that. There's also a double feature of Girl Genius Comics, and I grab those. It's the first time I've bashed my head against the 200 megabyte limit on my birthday gift to self of an Amazon scribe. That's the web upload max. Maybe there's another way to transfer in the file. There's also a time-limited but duration-unknown Warhammer Skulls Festival of Computer Games on Fanatical in which you can get some Warhammer, and that's 40k and fantasy computer games at some dramatic discounts. Or, if you're a Geek Native patron, at the Quaestor level, which is $5 a month, then there's a gift of the Lair of the Leopard Empresses coming your way. That's a Monsters Monsters powered tabletop game with swords and sorcery in jungle heat and death. Speaking of patrons, remember you've got a few days left to vote in the June Spotlight. The publishers in the shortlist are Lost Colossus Games, Deep Light Games, The Scrying Dutchman, Midnight Owl Games, and Dice Geeks. On that note, let's wrap up there. Rest in peace, Tina Turner, and good luck to travellers trying to get to UK Games Expo. We'll catch up in two weeks' time.